Reflections in Time is made possible in part by support from the UNO Alumni Association, fostering a legacy of alumni giving since 1913. The interview series, Reflections in Time, was begun by the late Professor Paul Borgie more than 20 years ago. This new series continues Paul's work and is dedicated to his memory. My name is Jack Newton. I'm retired now, but I'm still active as a professor emeritus. I've been on the faculty of UN Omaha since 1960 and served for 20 years as Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. I worked closely with Professor Borgi in the development of his original interview series, and I can think of no more fitting tribute to him than to continue this work. It's a uh, little overcast afternoon here in, uh, on the campus of UNO, University of Nebraska at Omaha. Uh, the year is 2004. It's a day in late March, spring day, and I have with me today as my guest a longtime professor at UNO, now retired, uh, Helen Howell. Hi. Dr. Howell, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's fine to be here. <laughs> um, oh, I said you're retired. Uh, you came to UNO a long time ago. Well, I was an undergraduate student here to begin with. Ah, it wasn't UNO then. Was no, it was Omaha University. Right. Or, you, no, Municipal, Municipal Uni University, University of, of Omaha. Omaha right. <laughs> Dr. Bale. Yep. And uh, so I was, did my undergraduate work here and my master's degree here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was working in OPS as a teacher uh, while I was getting my master's <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I was at the Castle as a supervisor of instruction, uh, curriculum and instruction for intermediate grades. The Castle being Jocelyn Castle, mm -hmm, Jocelyn which was Castle. the headquarters right, for the uh, Omaha OPS Public administration mm -hmm. at the right. time. Right. And uh, it was delightful. I came out here one day to talk to a methods class I'd been invited out. And as we were walking uh, back from the luncheon at the uh, or the student center, mm -hmm. Holly Bethel said to me, I said something about, Holly, there's something I wanted to ask you, because I'd been, I'd given, been uh, offered jobs by a couple of publishing companies to be a consultant. And uh, she said, well, before you ask, I have something to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was done on the way walking back to the, to the building. And Professor Bethel is another long time yes. uh, a faculty member here, yes. and indeed she's uh, been interviewed as part of this series mm -hmm. early on. Good. She and I came to campus at the same time. Oh. She is a professor and I as a freshman, mm -hmm. <laughs> which was a long time a long ago. Time ago. <laughs> yes. Um, well, you know, let's, uh, let's begin at uh, more or less at the beginning here, okay. Helen. Uh, uh, we've uh, known each other for quite a while, and mm -hmm. but I don't think I've ever uh, really had a chance to learn much about your background, your, your roots, as it were. Could you tell us where you were born and where you went to school and things like that? Well, I was born in Ottawa, Kansas, mm -hmm. which is a, a small town uh, just about 54 miles straight south of mm -hmm. Topeka. And uh, I was born during the Depression, so things were very tough in our little town. And uh, we lived a part of the time with my grandfather and he was a wonderful old man. He was just, mm -hmm. uh, he couldn't stand to see us cry. Any of the, uh, any, my two brothers or I cry. So he would get after my mother <laughs> if, she, <laughs> if she would spank us or get after us. But he was a delight and I, I love that. Then we moved up into Ottawa and uh, were there for some time. But then the depression started and coming now down. And today, uh, except for uh, older folks they like don't know what the depression me, people is. don't know what depression meant. Well, that meant no one had a job <laughs> for a long time. 
And yeah, we talk about 5.6 percent yeah. unemployment now. It's nothing to Back what it was. Then, uh, mm -mm. You're right. Very, very few people had jobs. The, the biggest hire in town was the Santa Fe shops, and they closed down. Mm -hmm. Put everyone. So there was really no industry there at that time. So uh, eventually, my dad um, found out about Union Pacific hiring. Mm -hmm. So he and several of the other people came up and got jobs. And uh, they would come back and forth. They wanted to see their families. Mm -hmm. And so they would be in a car, one car, <clears throat> and two or three would have to ride in the trunk. Mm -hmm. and they'd leave it open a little, even in the coldest weather, so they could come home and see their families. And when they found out that the job was going to be stable, then we moved here to Omaha. And back in those days, mm -hmm. a ride like that wasn't a small no. thing. There no. weren't any interstate no. highways. No, 250 <laughs> miles on Highway 75. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was not easy. Right. But uh, they got jobs at Union Pacific, and my dad worked for them uh, from then on. So you moved to Omaha when you were uh, I was what in grade? I was in first grade. First grade. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were uh, you spent most mm -hmm. of your life here. Yes, very and definitely. You, you went to grade school here. Mm -hmm. And I went to high school here, and then to the university. Uh -huh. <laughs> and what then uh, what high school did you go to? North High. And uh, th that was uh, well, that's one of the older high schools yes. here in Omaha. Mm -hmm. isn't it it's is. It's been around for yeah. a while. Mm -hmm. Took the took the streetcar to North High. <laughs> 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 Streetcars were really wonderful, <clears throat> and. Uh, you could go just about any place. <coughs> Excuse me. I also take the streetcar then to come out to the university mm -hmm. uh, down to 20, 20th and Dodge and then get on a bus that would go out to the university. My brother had then that ahead of me gone out to the university mm -hmm. and he used to talk about this nice man that would come and sit by him. He got on down on Dodge Street and he'd sit by him and they just had the nicest visit. And then one day he happened to find out some, some occur thing was occurring, event was occurring here at the university. The man was Milo Bale. <laughs> <laughs> so Dr. Bale used to ride the oh, streetcar yes. on the bus. Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> and, and he'd always come and sit by my brother, so they had the nicest visits yeah. all the time. I hate to ma think what he might have told him, <laughs> <laughs> not knowing. <laughs> well, uh, anything he told him probably got uh, used well. I'm sure uh, he was quite Dr. a man. Dr. Bale was a very careful administrator yes. and yes. was uh, always trying to improve things, yeah, even very though much. he didn't strict. have much to work with to improve no. it. <laughs> man, and here it was a little strict at times, but that was okay. Yeah, that, well, that's that what was, made it. That was part of what he had to do that's because right. of the times and mm -hmm. because of the because uh, he was running the university on that's a shoestring. Right. That's right. He certainly mm -hmm. was, but he did a beautiful job of it. He left a wonderful legacy for those that followed he did. him. And he again is uh, part of this interview series. And <laughs> I should Good. I should mention maybe early on for our audience mm -hmm. that um, this interview series is recorded and it is available. All of the all of the mm -hmm. uh, tapes are available mm -hmm. in the uh, UNO library, mm -hmm. and they're also available in the Alumni Association library. Okay. So you can go to either of those two libraries and uh, sit down by a television set there and watch any of your favorite characters <laughs> in the history of the university. <laughs> because be we fun. have more than a hundred, so mm -hmm. most of them are there. Are there? And people will be able to watch you after this. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe oh some former students. So. Oh, probably. <laughs> Every place I go now, I'm running into a former student, right. <laughs> and I'm beginning to think they're getting a little old <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. to claim. <laughs> yes, but I, they uh, were delightful. Uh, every now again, now and then, I read in the alumni magazine mm -hmm. about one of my students who's. Uh, in his or her 60s uh -huh. and uh, yes, yes. <laughs> has grandchildren. Yes, well, in educate, but that was the beauty of our university because any age yeah. they came. What was it Dr. Bale always used to say from, from 16 to 60 or more? Mm -hmm. And of course, then who was the little man that was out here all the time? A doctor, he was a medical doctor, and I think he was 80 or 90 and he was still taking classes. Oh, that he was, was Dr. Uh, Bresnahan, yes. I think. He yes. was a friend of. Uh, yes of uh, William Thompson, Dean mm -hmm. Thompson. Who That's was, right. And uh, when I first came here, Bill Thompson, Dean Thompson, had just retired. Oh, mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, would come over once a week mm -hmm. and sit in one of the little cubicles that they used to have off the dining room mm -hmm. in the cafeteria yeah. at the student center. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and uh, Doctor, the reason I got to know Bresnahan was that he would come over with them. They'd come together, oh, and they'd yeah. have lunch, and then anybody who wanted to sit down and talk with them would have a chance to eat lunch with them. And uh, it, was, it was quite it was, interesting. It was I, interesting. I learned a lot. 
They had a lot, a lot of nice people here. Ben in the bookstore, mm -hmm. he was a delight. He always sort of looked after the, the students and made sure that things were going pretty smoothly for them or he had help. In fact, when I, when I got my doctorate, you see my doctorate, I came back here to, of course, mm -hmm. I was coming, and ordered my cap and gown. And Ben, he thought that was pretty neat. So he was taking charge of everything care of because it. he had remembered me since, from when I was a freshman. Well, that was true back then, yes. and uh, amazingly, even though we're much, much bigger now, yes. it's still pretty much true. That's, uh, that that we that's have, wonderful. We're blessed with uh, mm -hmm. wonderful people that uh, work here, yes. as, uh, you know, doing all of the staff work that mm. uh, that needs to get done. And there were some fantastic yeah. people. I miss I sort of miss some of them. Yeah. Uh, Dean Mary Young, mm -hmm. <laughs> Dean of Women. <laughs> she was a character <laughs> with her. She had uh, hearing aids in both ears, and if she didn't want to, s and she carried the tuner right here, the mm -hmm. one that turned it up and down, and if she didn't want to hear what someone was saying, she didn't like it, she'd just take it and turn them off and just stand there and <laughs> smile at them. She was a delight. <laughs> well, let's, we'll have a chance to talk more about uh, many of these uh, people that uh, you've known over the years, but uh, let's spend a little bit more time talking about you. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we got to the point where you were um, uh, you finished up high school and you're starting out here mm -hmm. as a freshman mm -hmm. at uh, at Omaha University. Mm -hmm. What was the university like back then? We 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 were on this campus. I we take were on it, this you campus. You told me you took the mm -hmm. streetcar to get here. Yeah, and we had um, the main building. We had um, the Quonset Hut, and the the Quonset Hut. And we had the shack. Mm -hmm. Now the shack is where everyone hung out, and b it was just a, a wooden building. And well, they, well, we'd call them today temporary buildings. Yeah. Well, now this wasn't. It wasn't, wasn't one a of the Quonset, Quonset huts. No, the Quonset no, hut. I we those. had the Quonset hut was one was women's phys ed, right. and the other was um, engineering. Right. And then we also had uh, the field house, and so and the the football stadium was right. there, and it was my class that that did the cornerstone for what was then the administrate uh, the uh, library mm -hmm. and now it's it's now the administration, administration building. building and mm -hmm. the shack and the was a building not much different in size yeah. than the Quonset hut but right. it, was it was a wood. rectangular mm -hmm. yeah. instead of a semicircular right. and in in the end of it was the gateway office for the school newspaper yes. in one end and it was delightful because in in the hot weather they could open up one wall would come up and you had screens there and it was delightful and, and, and they even brought in a TV set when TVs came in because one of the students out here uh, was on, what was it, WWTV mm -hmm. and he was major action on that and they would turn that TV on when he was due on at noontime and no one was to mock in front of that TV set. <laughs> His fraternity well, just wouldn't allow it. A place called The Shack was in some ways one of the predecessors mm -hmm. of what's now the student union. That's right. And it wasn't too many years later that that uh, student center was built. That's was right. It? That no. was built around in the 1958-59, yes. somewhere around there. After I was gone from there and before I came back. Right. <laughs> but it, yeah, and it was it was a delightful place. We also used the cafeteria, and they would have that open in the main. And that was on the first floor mm -hmm. of what's now Arts and Sciences Hall. Right. By, uh, and it was correct. on the east side. Yes. And uh, that was a nice place to be. The bookstore was in the middle of the first floor. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, the deans of, dean of students' office were upstairs on the second floor. Um, they were much, pretty much across from Dr. Bale's office. And we, I, I know that the, uh, I wasn't here when they had a cafeteria in, that, in the administration mm -hmm. building, now Arts and Sciences okay. Hall. But uh, uh, when I came here, I opened a laboratory, a psychology laboratory, uh -huh. and they had our laboratory tables were those old tables with the black linoleum tops oh. on them that were in the mm -hmm. uh, in, in the cafeteria. <laughs> so I uh, I know a little bit about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we were out there. You could get coffee any time of the day, right. so that would be a, a spot also. When you got a little older and you didn't go to the shack, when you were maybe like a junior or senior, and you didn't go to the shack as much, you went to the cafeteria. <laughs> I see. <laughs> there had to be certain rules about these things. Uh, well, back in those days, things were quite different. Yes. I remember. Uh, uh, girls had to wear dresses or, yes. or skirts. They yes. couldn't. Uh, no. 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 No jeans, certainly, and mm -hmm. not even slacks. No. And you were allowed in phys ed to wear your little outfits that were interesting, but um, no, that's right. It was definitely 
uh, you had to dress and, and look like ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. at all times. Right. And I think it was because they always said if you, if you looked like it, you would act like it. Mm -hmm. And we did act pretty well, truthfully. <laughs> <laughs> One of the big things is when we went to uh, Orlando for the uh, Tangerine Bowl game. Oh, yes. And we had a private train that took us down pretty much. They, they did add on some cars mm -hmm. for people that were from Atlanta, got on Atlanta, beca or before Atlanta, mm -hmm. because they were going down for the game in the, um, uh, the, big, the Orange Bowl. Mm -hmm. And so that was interesting. They, the cars sort of mingled, and we got off in midnight and had a um, pep rally <laughs> in the Atlanta uh, station. And our, well, Don, Don Flaster and his wife were chaperones. He was at that time dean of students, wasn't he? He was uh, dean of men. Dean of mm -hmm. men, right. And uh, the next morning, he was coming through the cars just panicked because he didn't, they didn't know we were off the train at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and he was panicked about it, <clears throat> and he was going through, and his wife was following him, saying, I told you they were okay. I told you they'd be all right. <laughs> didn't, well, didn't lose a person. <laughs> Don's another one who's been interviewed in this series. He's so a if delight. you want to see him, go to the library and <laughs> take the tape out. Um, okay, so you uh, came to Omaha University. You began as a student, and you graduated. Mm -hmm. And you graduated with a degree in... Education. In education. Mm -hmm. that, that figures, mm -hmm. since that's, that's, that's what you've I wanted. been doing all your life. Uh -huh. And um, uh, then you did what? Did you go out and get a job right away? Yes. I was hired. Actually, I was hired at the very first Cooperating Teachers Tea mm -hmm. that was given out here. I was president of the, at that time, <clears throat> it, was, it was Future Teachers. It wasn't Student Education Association. And I was president, and we had the tea, the first one. I had been in for my interview down at the castle mm -hmm. that uh, a little before the tea, and so they all came, Mr. Hill and Dr. Burke and, and all the people. All of these people from the Omaha from, Public Schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's basically the only school district at that time mm -hmm. where we had student teachers. And I was hired at the Cooperating Teachers Tea. Wow. <laughs> so they must have liked you. Well, I, I was president. As I say, I gave a little <laughs> greeting, and they, Dr. Burke came mm -hmm. over and said, well, after that, you're hired. <laughs> so tell us uh, what school you went to and what grade you taught. Well, I was assigned, first of all, at Lothrop Grade School. Mm -hmm. And I taught fourth grade the first year, but that wasn't my favorite oh, grade. Where is Lothrop in Omaha? It's about 24th and Lothrop Street. Okay. It's about 3200, 31, 3200 north. Uh -huh. And it was an older building at the time. Uh, we had a lot of children there. We had about 1,100 youngsters, K through 8. Oh my, that's a big elementary school. Mm -hmm. we, our classes would run at least over 40, 45, 46. And, uh, some of the children came from homes who, that had problems, and, but they were dear children, and you, you couldn't stop loving them and thinking they were just terrific. Um, and then I taught sixth grade my second year there. I, fourth grade, I said, they're, they're too young. I don't <laughs> want them that young. I, I feel like I should be babying them, and I want to teach. So I, I was changed to sixth grade, and I was there for two years, and then I was transferred to Dundee Elementary School. Well, that must have been a big change. Now, Dundee is where? It's on um, 51st and, or 50th, rather, and um, about Chicago, between Chicago and Davenport. So you went from what today we might call the inner city to the uh, at that time to the affluent suburbs yes. as it were and, <laughs> and that was suburbs it was. back then it and, was a, and we think of it as right. the middle of town now but uh, it, back then it was kind of on right. the edge of things wasn't it yeah really was and it Dundee school at that time was considered the highest academic elementary school in the city and when i started we were had k through 8 well, then Lewis and Clark was built, and we lost the seventh and eighth graders. Mm -hmm. And then sixth grade was the highest grade there. And it was, it was an interesting change. I mean, completely, if you could get two extremes, those were the two extremes. Well, since my children all went to uh, Washington school, I might argue with, her, <laughs> with you as to what the highest academic school is. <laughs> well, now you have to understand. <laughs> we had Rabbi Kripke's son, Saul. <laughs> Oh, uh, and yes, I had a, uh, I had their daughter Netta in sixth grade. Yes, he's re he received some years ago here an honorary mm -hmm. degree as being one of the yes. brightest scientists in the country, mathematicians. He, you know, he never he went to uh, I had Netta, his sister, the year he went to um, Harvard, mm -hmm. and he was teaching classes at MIT, mm -hmm. and he, no one wanted to room with him <laughs> because he was too intelligent and they couldn't even understand him, and she would be so unhappy about her brother. 
but he was uh, he's done wonderful things and and what he's done he went on to on scholarship to England and to the school there to Oxford and um, he came well we gave him the honorary degree here but the the Kripkes were delightful people and what high school did he go to Central Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He didn't go to North. He went to no, Central. he went to Central. <laughs> my brothers went I to Central. I, I couldn't help but get a little <laughs> dig in there. Well, my brothers went to Central, and I thought, no way am I following two brothers. <laughs> <laughs> well, all my kids went to Central. Uh -huh. so I'm a good. You're a good Central, Central fan, fan, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. But um, yeah, it was. They were delightful youngsters. Uh, now you said you worked on your master's degree while you were teaching. Mm -hmm. and you worked night classes. Okay, back and then summer. we had lots of night classes, yes. didn't we? Yes, we really did, and I could get a lot. And then, of course, I'd go in the summer as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, terrific were, people. Um, uh, the um, well, is that still true? Do we still have many night classes for teachers? I think so because the teachers, of course, unless it's in the summer, they can't get here. Okay, right. So when I was still on faculty here, I had quite a f I had night classes with a lot of teachers here to get their graduate. Mm -hmm. Uh, degrees. I'm not sure that we offered anything. I'm, I'm sure we didn't offer anything for the undergraduates mm -hmm. at that time in our department, but for graduate students, yes. I taught okay. quite a few of those classes. Is that a hard thing to do, to finish a master's degree while you're working full-time? It keeps you busy. A lot of people do it, I <laughs> yes, know. Yes, uh -huh. it keeps you, definitely keeps you busy. But um, in some ways it was helpful, too, because you could apply what you were learning right in your classroom as well. And I had uh, delightful people, as I say, Holly Bethel and, and Dr. Francis Holliday. They were marvelous ladies, and I enjoyed them immensely. And um, so that, in fact, Holly and I were friends until she died. Mm -hmm. And uh, we traveled uh, together yes. a few times over to Europe. She well, was we'll talk some about that a little, a little mm -hmm. more uh, in a few minutes. Um, but let's talk, go back and talk a little bit more about your... Uh, uh, your master's program. Uh, you um, did you, you specialize in that program? Um, in education, again, okay. and uh, basically it was more of a social sciences kind mm -hmm. of thing. And so I took a lot of the different courses that would do that. I also had administration. I took administration, elementary school administration mm -hmm. courses as well. And uh, basically it was. Simple, <laughs> not simple, right, right. Uh, but it was uh, the plain, the, the regular format that went, you did when you were getting a master's in, in elementary education. Were most of the other students in the classes um, also mm -hmm. teachers who were working full time? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, in, the, in the night classes and then even in the summer classes too mm -hmm. and we'd be together. And it was sort of fun because I met some delightful people. And you must have had lots of opportunities then to share experiences mm -hmm. uh, about we what did went on in your classrooms. Yes, and it helps because one person can say, well, now this is what I tried, and another one, well, I tried this. <laughs> and so it does work. Yeah. It works nicely. Yeah, that should be great. Mm -hmm. um, well, then from there, after you uh, finished your master's degree, after you uh, finished working at Dundee School, um, you said you went down to work in Jocelyn Castle for mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for the administrative part of the uh, Omaha Public Schools. Yeah, well, I worked as a super. Well, you have different terms of, mm -hmm. of rank, but it was in a supervisory capacity, and I worked with elementary, well, intermediate grade teachers, mm -hmm. and I was assigned certain buildings. There were three of us that worked at that level, and there were, I think, four of the primary grade because they had kindergarten as mm -hmm. well, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we all were housed on the top floor, the third floor of Jocelyn Castle. Mm -hmm. And what you did was you just went out and, and you were assigned, we, we each had our own buildings that we were assigned to. And then we made sure we made visits every so often. So, And my teachers, I had one who was just a delight and she'd say, now every time you come I want you to bring me a new idea. And I said, fine, if you let me teach it first. <laughs> <laughs> but because you do miss the teaching. Right, that's right. But you, by that time, were a rather experienced teacher. That's probably right. why you, they put you in that job, right? To, uh, um, I, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I was, um, well, it was Dr. Burke, and that was, <clears throat> Dr. Burke had done this. I was out of town. I was down with my parents in, in um, St. Louis. I'd been to a national convention and <clears throat> came back. and. As I always say, I walked, went home, cleaned the house, washed the clothes, got in the car, and drove on down to St. Louis. <laughs> and uh, so I was there, and my brother called and said, I see in the paper that you have a new job. 
And I said, what school am I going to be custodian in? <laughs> he said, no, it says you're going to be a helping teacher. He said, what's that? And I said, oh, that's supervisory. So when Mom and I came home, we were going out to see my brother in, in Idaho, my other brother. And um, I stopped and went down to the castle. And as I say, Dr. Burke had died that spring. And Dr. Knutson was mm -hmm. acting superintendent. Okay, so Dr. Burke was uh, superintendent mm -hmm. then. When and I he's started. the uh, gentleman for whom uh, Burke High School yes. is named out mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. the western part of the right. city here. Mm -hmm. He was, Dr. Burke was a perfectionist in many things and he didn't put up with a lot of, of less than mm -hmm. the best that he could get from, uh, from people. But <clears throat> as long as you worked hard, he was, a, he was just as nice and, and delightful. I had mm -hmm. no problems with Dr. Burke at all. Some people were afraid of him, but uh, I, I guess I was too dumb to be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> what my brothers would say. <laughs> but it, it was it was an interesting job. I worked um, directly under Craig Fullerton, mm -hmm. and he was a delightful person, just a delightful person, bright as could be. And uh, But I remember the time he had, uh, Ed Kleeman was there and, uh, as his assistant, and he came out one day and he said, this mail, I haven't had a time to go through it. Ed, you go through it. He had a stack of this. <laughs> <laughs> so Ed started going through it, and I was sitting there, our desks were close, and I was sitting there just about to die laughing and uh, over the whole thing. And pretty soon he came out and he said, Dad, well, now, he said, you know, I don't have to see a lot of that. He said, you can probably take care of it. And he said, now, of course, if there's an invitation from the president, <laughs> and he said, well, as a matter of fact, there is one <laughs> to serve on a panel of educators. He said, but it's too late now. <laughs> And I was sitting there about to yeah. die laughing, and Doctor, uh, he looked at me and he said, Helen, you're so organized, you make me ill. <laughs> <laughs> but he was an, an absolute yeah. delight. Yeah, I knew Dr. Klima um, briefly. He was, uh -huh. a or, uh, he was principal at Lewis and Clark yes. when my children mm -hmm. were there. Right. Yeah. And Ed was a delight. He was a nice, yeah. nice person. But it was, it was, we had fun, but we worked hard up there. And that okay. was Okay, now you said that... Uh, uh, Shortly thereafter, mm -hmm. you uh, received an invitation to come to UNO, mm -hmm. Omaha University. Omaha me, University at UNO that time. Yet. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> and um, how did that work out? Uh, great. Uh, the only proviso was that I was to get my doctorate, and I said, "Well, that's fine." And so um, I, I talked, and I talked to Dr. Fullerton first mm -hmm. because I felt it was his right to know, and. Uh, so he said, well, he said, I don't like it, but he said, if that's, you know, so he said, you better talk to Dr. Miller because he's in charge of personnel for uh, uh, principals and administrative, mm -hmm. any kind of staff. So I went down to talk to him and he said, well, go and try if you want to, but if you don't like it, remember, you always have a place here, Great. which I thought was yeah. very nice. Yeah. He's a delightful person too. Well, now, did you start right away going off to Colorado to? Yes. Now, how did you do that? Was uh, you? I went in the summers. You went uh, just summers. No, and then the last year I spent the year of residency oh, oh, that's because right. that Most was required. Most places you have mm -hmm. to have this year's mm -hmm. residency yes. where you have to actually. And I was um, <laughs> a graduate assistant there, yeah. and uh, supervised student teachers. Uh, did anything I, they want to? I, I worked with Dr. Husbands in his office, and mm -hmm. he was an absolute delight. In fact, the people out there were just wonderful and they offered me a job out there and I oh said my. well that's Great. nice but I said I promised to go back well but you can stay here and I said you know <laughs> I, it would be nice if I could put the two faculties together because they were so great. <laughs> well but you received your Doctor of Education degree there. Yes. Did you uh, do a thesis yes. or a research project or anything? Thesis, in that? Uh -huh. On what reading. Was it? it was on reading. Oh, Remember what it was all about? Or? Other oh. than just being on reading? <laughs> <laughs> it had to be on retention and what the children came up with. Oh. So I did a lot of testing in the schools. And uh, at that time, they would, said no one could go in the schools. And so I talked to Dr. Fullerton. And he said, yes, do what you want. And I said, well, I'm going to need to have their IQs, and I'm going to need to have their grades, as well as the names. And he said, that's all right. And I said, but I will keep that secret. I will uh, number them right. and keep that information and so he said, help yourself. And so he, they opened the files to me. And I said, could I bring a couple of grad assistants to help me get the information because I wanted IQ, I wanted uh, yes. their averages and so on. And he said, yes. And so we went down. They and must have thought very highly of you to give you those privileges. Well, doctor, we all got along well. <laughs> now, was there a, a fairly 
close relationship between uh, Omaha University and the public school system? Pretty much so, yes, because a lot of our students taught in Omaha public schools. Mm -hmm. And we also had student teachers. A great many of our student teachers were assigned in the Omaha public schools. We also then eventually assigned in District 66 and in Millard. But basically, it was, it was the Omaha schools that we really worked most closely with. I remember when I first came here that uh, the psychology department where I taught mm -hmm. had a uh, uh, had the child study service, mm -hmm. which was uh, really kind of jointly operated. Although I think that the uh, the, uh, the public schools had the major say in it, mm -hmm. and it was uh, one of those things. I think that at least nominally, Dean Thompson was the head of it. Probably. But uh, he had a couple of people who did the work for him. Yeah, um, I was trying to think. Uh, one of them, her, her sister was a principal. Oh, really? Uh huh. And I can't remember the name now. My my memory's gone. <laughs> yeah, mine. Well, f when we go back that far, <laughs> that's a long way. I uh -huh. I, re I could p remember a number of the people mm -hmm. there, but to try and put names with faces is all. A little hard when you go back. Uh, that is. Gee whiz, 40 time. years ago now. Oh, God. more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so things went pretty well at Colorado for you then. Yes, they were delightful. You enjoyed the campus and... Uh, and the people. They, the, the office, when I, my, my year of residency there, mm -hmm. I was a, a grad student assistant in Dr. Kenneth Husband's office, and he was just a delight. He did the student teaching placement and everything. Well, one day, we got to laughing about something. We were always doing something we shouldn't do, and uh, he was going to teach me how to do the t berry shuffle. So we did that. Well, I taught him to do the, the Charleston. Well, he kicked the wastebasket over and caused so much noise. You could hear the door slamming all up and down the hall. Sounds like you were a pretty live wire there. <laughs> we, were having a, we had a good time at all times. The office, uh, the dean's office, they were delightful. And uh, they, they thought it was hilarious. They found they, we'd go down there and they'd say, do the t berry shuffle for us together. So we would do it for them. <laughs> It must have been uh, that's such a, a that campus is at such a mm -hmm. such a beautiful spot that must have been a bit of a temptation to stay there. Well, it was, and and I liked the people. And they were, um, I must say, they were all of them just as nice as to to me as they could be, and made things as easy for me as they could. But I uh, I liked the people here too. And I felt I'd said that I would come back, and I wouldn't go back on my word. Mm -hmm. And I, Holly expected sure. me back, and I wouldn't do that to her. And, and I enjoyed it here anyway. I like the people here, too. And there's a difference between the two universities. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, Colorado was one of the uh, country's major research universities, mm -hmm. and uh, this was just a small municipal university. Yes. Uh, did you? Uh, was that uh, did that difference make any difficulties for you? No, uh, I was lucky when I did my dissertation. They have the research ed research, and we had two of the top people in the country mm -hmm. uh, that were there, and uh, they were just delightful. And they would help you, and they would guide you through. They had grad assistants too, and I was assigned a grad assistant because my dissertation was very statistical. And I laughed and I said, of all people. I'm not a statistical person. I don't do well with that. But they said, do it. And <clears throat> when it came out afterwards, my, the grad assistant that helped me what was their top one. He said, you know, you did a better job on your work than I did on mine. Mm. He said, you were more complete. And, and I, he said, this is one of the more complex that we ha than we have around here usually. Yeah. And so I was very pleased that, yeah. that it had done so well with that. Uh, when you first came to, to uh, Omaha University, uh, what rank did they hire you at? Were you an instructor? Or? Instructor. Okay, mm -hmm. and then, uh, uh, then you soon. How long before you became an assistant professor? Oh my, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It was <coughs> several years, maybe four or five years. Okay. And uh, then and to then associate. And then you went to the next rank, which would be associate and professor. And I think that was about three years because I know there were some people in other departments that complained about it. <laughs> they thought you got promoted too Tw fast. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then well, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> when I presume about that time you were finishing your doctoral degree. Um, yes, I had finished. Uh, yes, I'd finished it. They must have given you mm -hmm. a lot of credit too for the fact that you were an experienced teacher, that mm -hmm. you weren't just right. someone right out of a doctoral program, that you had uh, 
you had many years of uh, background experience that contributed to what you did in the classroom. And it was fun. Yeah. I, I, really, I really enjoyed teaching. Uh, always have. What was the uh, what was the curriculum like back then in the in the education college? Uh, well, for elementary teachers, we always had, of course, the intro to education. Uh, there was um, psych classes. We took we had to take educate. Well, we took intro to psych, and then we could have education psych. Yeah, educational psychology, mm -hmm. and uh, we took um, oh my human growth and development. Uh, what else? The bases. We had several, quite a few things that were required. And then you went into the courses as you, when you were junior and senior, you went into the ones, for instance, I was interested in intermediate grades. So that's the one I went into. And we had Dr. Holliday was the person who was my advisor. And she was the one that looked after the intermediate grades. Dr. Bethel did the primary. And uh, so I met with them. Uh, and they as student teachers, I would meet with, with Dr. Holliday after each visit, when I, she would come out to visit, mm -hmm. and go over what I was doing in the classroom. And uh, delightful. And you have, you have courses that will go with what you're going to be sure. doing. You, so as I say, we had intro to ed, we had ed psych, we had child growth and development, we had um, oh, hu human, yeah, human growth. We had uh, children's literature, we had methods classes to take, we had student mm -hmm. teaching to do, and then of course you did the other courses as well because you had sure. to have a basis in the humanities and in science right. and, in, and in everything. So uh, yeah, well, I took uh, physical science and uh, got a big chart. I had grown up with, my, my older brother was always into that, mm -hmm. and so when they wanted us to hook up a house, wire a house, well, the boys were doing it, and they couldn't get it. I said, finally, I was getting bored, and I said, we'll never get out of here. Give me that screwdriver. <laughs> so I hooked it up. But I'd, I'd done that since I was a child. Before I started kindergarten, I could make my own telegraph key mm -hmm. and make it work and knew the Morse code. Yes. But uh, So this was no big deal, and my, my oldest brother always was into that, and he was into electronics. Now, over the years while you were teaching, did you see many changes in the development of curriculum? Yes. A lot of things they became, um, well, we went into a lot of the modern math kinds of things, and the language was changing. And sometimes we went into some that were not too good. I was going to ask you, were most of these for the better or for the worse? <laughs> uh, whole language was not good. That whole language aspect that they, they taught, what was happening was that the students weren't learning much of anything about language. And when I go in, and visit student teacher, and I had a student teacher say in a sixth grade classroom at Columbian School, say, uh, well now get out your your diaries and, and to, to write. And she said, for instance, you might say what you did over the weekend. She says, now, I, uh, what was it, a friend, we went sh shopping, Her, I and her did so and so. And I'm sitting there, oh my. And uh, that was a problem, yes. and I think they did find eventually. The whole language was, I'm trying to remember, was that, that's when you said if you can say it, you can write it, or something like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. and it, it didn't have really much of, um, of any kind of background for it, and any kind of weight, because children are pretty systematic in, in those things, and they, they expect certain things, and they, that's how they learn, because one thing, and the way most texts and teachers, one thing builds on the other, and they have to have the beginning before they're going to get up here to the top. And so when you hand a child a sure. piece of paper that you've never taught writing to, mm -hmm. or you've never taught spelling or language or anything, that just doesn't work. Let me ask you another question about change. Um, right about that time, the, uh, there were some major changes going on in the whole culture of the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, for one thing, uh, there were many, many more opportunities open to, uh, to women. Mm -hmm. And um, in some ways, this wasn't very good for the school system. It's true. Because these, uh, particularly the very brightest women that uh, used to go into teaching or nursing or one of the, mm -hmm. quotes, uh, women's field, mm -hmm. uh, no longer needed to do that. Right. They could uh, go into law or medicine or mm -hmm. many other fields that were uh, now opening up to women. Uh, did crazy. you notice those differences much in the classroom when you were teaching? Did you get many uh, 
for example, did you? Uh, uh, the reverse was true too. Um, I, I suspect that many men went into elementary school they teaching. Did. Mm -hmm. did you see that? Did you see more men students in your class? We did have more men yeah. than, than than in the past. When I started out as an undergraduate, we had none. Mm -hmm. And then gradually we did get more men in because there was a need for them. And uh, how yeah, did that work out? That was fine overall. Were they as good as the women students? It depended <laughs> uh, no, uh, on individual. No, no, but individual by individual yeah. because we had some women students who weren't that good, and we had men students who weren't that good. But we also had some of each who were terrific and did a beautiful job. So it's. I think it's more person by person than than by sex. Uh, for for young children. We usually look more for women, females, because of the mothering instinct that mm -hmm. for like your preschool in your kindergarten, they sort of need some of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that state, and most fellas didn't want to go into that age level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they preferred the... Uh, well, all of my children in their elementary school experience in the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, fourth, fifth, sixth grades, uh, all of them had at least one male Did teacher. They? Good. And so I kind of wondered about mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. uh, they enjoyed it. Yeah, they, were... they do. When I, when I went to Dundee, um, we had a junior high. We ran a junior high program there because Lewis and Clark had not been built yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had men there and a male phys ed teacher, but all the rest of us were women. We didn't have any uh, one through six. Now, some of the uh, teachers that I've talked to over the years have complained uh, that uh, they said, well, these men would come in and they'd teach for a year or so and then they'd be promoted to principal and they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't consider the women for it. They'd immediately promote the men mm -hmm. or sometimes they'd put men in administrative positions who hadn't had much of any that's experience true. as teachers. Do you run into that yeah, at all? Yeah, I've, I've seen that happen and that's too bad because it should go by worth and, and uh, their ability mm -hmm. rather than what they've shown to, that they can do and just to put them into something without that's that can be very detrimental I think to to children and uh, that's what I was always there for the children they I came su first suppose uh, well uh, getting away from children a little bit uh, I suppose that uh, that sort of thing could even happen at the university level and you could mm -hmm. do you, have you known of people to be promoted at the university uh, oh, because yes. of, uh, they're men instead of women and oh yes I'm not sure if it's men but probably Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I won't. <laughs> I won't say who. <laughs> I, I was just trying to but put you on the spot. Yeah, I, I know, and I. <laughs> but um, yes, that has happened also, and that is not always good. Uh, I still think, and and we we had always had a policy that you did not teach out here unless you had experience in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But that was overlooked, mm -hmm. at least once, maybe more. I'm not sure, which is not good. Okay. I won't push you on that, but um, <laughs> I'd like to. Yeah, I, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you were uh, you're teaching lots of classes here. What, were you mostly teaching courses that dealt with uh, elementary education? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yes. Uh, um, well, we did. Uh, then Jean Bressler and I did uh, work together, team teach on gifted education uh -huh. when we brought that in, and uh, because that way we we had K through twelve teachers and so we had we could take care of both yeah. and um, that was a we, we started the gifted ed program here because the schools were needing it they were going this way and so we worked hard on that and uh, then we ran a program for several years in the summer for mm -hmm. gifted youngsters and they were fun yeah <laughs> they bet. did some neat things there with them our teachers well we you taught did you teach graduate classes too oh, yes mm -hmm. so you must have been a member of the graduate faculty to do yes. that and uh, did you uh, that usually uh, at least if, uh, at the higher level where you're uh, uh, teaching advanced classes you have to be what what do they call it a fellow of the graduate mm -hmm. faculty I guess yeah, and I was and uh, that uh, that takes some accomplishment to to be yeah. uh, was that uh, was that uh, difficult to do would mm -hmm. you have to uh, I think the my teaching was fine uh, but it required the the publication require so that you publish some mm -hmm. uh, research studies yeah. or analytical mm -hmm. studies of mm -hmm. some sort. And I did that, and uh, it was fun. I it what uh, what field did you uh, did you publish in? What uh, um, was it? Uh, basically, 
there were several. <laughs> well, I was trying to get back to see, did you continue on, for example, with your reading research that you did in graduate school? Um, I did some with that, yes. Um, not, not as much with that. And actually, some, the one article I think that got the most publicity was the one I wrote about uh, the fun way to teach reading ah, and the different okay. things that you could do with it. And that was picked up, and I received letters and requests from various places overseas if I would please send them a copy of it because it had appeared apparently in the, the world book. Yeah. And so that was, that was sort of, that was, I think that was my last article. <laughs> well, you know, time's, uh, time's rolling on here, and uh, mm -hmm. amazingly enough, we're <laughs> uh, there isn't that much time no. left, and we have some things that I really want to talk about. Okay. Um, for example, you were, um, uh, you were active in faculty governance here, too, weren't mm -hmm. you, on the uh, on faculty senate? Yes. Uh, and that was one of the early ones. Well, I mean, the first one. Yeah. I was, that um, was in the, what, Secretary late Secretary Treasurer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were the first, so you had an office in the very mm -hmm. first uh, mm -hmm. faculty senate that UNO had. Mm -hmm. That uh, that's uh, your colleagues must have thought highly of you to uh, mm -hmm. elect you to that office. Well, I'm not sure that anyone wanted to be secretary treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> they elected it because they nobody else nobody wanted else to do the wanted work. To do it. Oh, come on, you, they elected because they thought you'd do the work well. That's why well, they elected you. And actually, all I had to do was take the notes and give them to the faculty senate secretary, and uh -huh. she did the typing of it. And then you were on lots of committees. Uh, yeah. If I remember looking at uh, uh, looking at what we talked about uh, the other day, you were on a uh, on review committees mm -hmm. that the faculty senate mm -hmm. has for, uh, and that the office of academic affairs yeah. has for uh, each department. Mm -hmm. and you, uh, that must have been interesting. It really too. was interesting. Uh, it gave. I thought it was very good because it gave me an opportunity to learn about more in in more depth yeah. about different departments. So those those committees are kind of the accountability committees. Mm -hmm. They yes. look at. The, and see whether the departments are doing mm -hmm. a good job. With, and you know, each not. committee has an expert in that field from a different campus. Mm -hmm. And that they were the ones that wrote the report. Yeah. But I set up the, the, the person who was chairman would set up the schedule and meet and make sure everything was covered that's, with that's the department chairman. That's one of the chairman. programs of the university that uh, probably isn't too well known outside no. of the boundaries of the university, that's but it's true. a good one. Yes, it is. That uh, when you talk about accountability, these departments mm -hmm. uh, we hold their feet to the fire, mm, that's and right. uh, they don't uh, they just tell you they're good. They, uh, as they you have said, to show you it. get a, an expert from some other place, mm -hmm. and you get mm -hmm. faculty colleagues who, while they're colleagues, are not part of your department or that's even right. part of your college. That's right. And uh, they look at you very mm -hmm. closely. In fact, I did psychology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first year of psychology, and I was most impressed. I'll tell you that now, <laughs> with what you all did there. It was terrific. Uh, and uh, another thing that you mentioned earlier, that uh, I want to do two things here. Let me just tell mm -hmm. you before we're done. We've got uh, ten minutes or so, and uh, that should be enough time. Mm -hmm. uh, I want it, you talked earlier about having traveled a bit, mm -hmm. and I'd like to just uh, uh, spend a little time talking about that. And then I really want to spend as much time as we can talking about uh, the different people that you've known on campus. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about some of them. We've talked about Dr. Bethel and mm -hmm. Dr. Bale and some of the others that you knew here on campus. But uh, uh, I'd like to hear about as many as we have time to okay. fit in. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and I'm sure you've known lots of them. So uh, let's talk about travel briefly first. I know that uh, my experience, in fact, I think the first time I really got to know you at all, uh, know who you were, was uh, back in, what was it, 1973. When Dr. Roskins, who had been recently named uh, Chancellor mm -hmm. at uh, UNO, and it was mm -hmm. UNO mm -hmm. then, um, uh, was very much interested in uh, international programs. Mm -hmm. And through his associations with the people at uh, Kent State University, where he came from in Ohio, uh, he, had the, um, he had the contacts Mm -hmm. to set up a really great travel program to what was then the Soviet Union. Yes. And yes. I remember you were on that trip. Yes. I remember your wife took the stitches out of one of his children's heads, oh, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, my wife is a nurse, uh -huh. so she could uh -huh. do that. Um, that but um, uh, 
but that was uh, want to tell us something about that how did you decide to do that well uh, my friend wanted to go there mm -hmm. and I said okay I'll go I went to I went to see that as well and uh, it, it was interesting and the lady that we met that was the Minister of Education uh, she, remember when we had that uh, play that they mm -hmm. did, the students? Yes, we went to, uh, well, one, cool. of the, one of the things, uh, uh, one of the great parts of that trip yes. was that through the Kent State Association, we mm -hmm. got to visit uh, cool. schools in Moscow. Yes. And, and uh, what you're talking about was one of the five schools that they had in Moscow where they stressed learning foreign languages. Yes, and this one was in English. And so one of them was in English. Mm -hmm. And they and were just delightful. The students put on plays for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. and did, uh, many My Fair Lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, they did excerpts from uh, And there was this lady that came in afterwards and, and uh, started talking about the problems with the, and she spoke, remember American? Mm-hmm. And, she, and, and the problems with education, I thought, oh my goodness, here's one of our people and we're going to be taken out and shot somewhere. <laughs> but afterwards we found out she was the Minister of Education for enti the entire mm -hmm. uh, Russia. And uh, she spoke English, so Dr. Roskins came up and he said, we want her to visit Omaha and you go get her. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so we, we, Irene Hoover and I went over and started visiting with her. And I said, where on earth did you learn the English? I said, you speak English, even the colloquialisms. She said, well, my husband was a general. Mm -hmm. And he, she said, we thought that the only way they were ever going to have peace in the world was for people to be able to talk together. And so that was what we have been trying to do, to get people to talk so there will be peace. And so I said, well, I understand you want to come to America. And she said, yes, I want to, to visit. And I said, we'd like for you to come to Omaha and uh, we'll be happy to show you anything in the, the school systems and, and everything. And she said, well, uh, if I can get this vis visa thing cleared up, we'll be there. Well, we received word that she was going to be coming, and then all of a sudden we received word she would not leave uh, Russia. That's too bad. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, that, uh, that always impressed me was yes. the fact that they had these five, five foreign language mm -hmm. schools. Isn't that and, wonderful? Uh, and we were uh, we thought that everything would be very secretive and closed mm -hmm. up, but uh, they said, wander around the halls, talk to any yes. students you want. We like to have them speaking to native speakers of English. Mm -hmm. That's part of their education. Talk to anybody, ask them anything. And wasn't and it wonderful? It, it was fun. Yes, it was. And those children did well with English. But uh, just think of the advantage that mm -hmm. has of uh, government service, That's of right. uh, foreign service, and so on for them to have people who were. Uh, what is it? From, by the time they were, these were schools that mm -hmm. ran from elementary school to high school, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and by the time they were in fifth grade, they were, we were told that they were having all of their classes in the language of, right, the school. of the school. So they had all their classes in English. That's right. And, and uh, I think that is amazing. Now that, uh, of course, Moscow was a huge city. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, and you could do that. They had many, many schools. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, it would it be special. great if we. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if, if we did some of our of cities could uh, do similar things mm -hmm. and uh, think of how mm. much uh, in in this day and age that's needed. think if we had a school someplace where children had learned to speak uh, fluent Arabic mm. how much more ad advanced our country right. would be in many ways now mm -hmm. in dealing with uh, countries in the Middle East. Isn't and, that uh, true? Yes, uh, very definitely. We send, I know, people out to the Army Language School uh, in Monterey, California, mm -hmm. and they, that's a very, very good school, mm -hmm. and they, but uh, it's not like growing up speaking. That's right, language. and that's what you need. And it could be done because of even here at the university, if you look, you see a lot of people that have come from other lands yes. and other countries that would be fantastic in teaching some of these things. Yeah. If well, in the really big cities, you could do that. Right. Oh, I'm not sure Omaha is quite big enough to For all of it. Have, a, <laughs> have a high <laughs> school where you spoke no, the only one language no, and it wasn't but still, English. But, uh, but uh, certainly in New York or Chicago or Los Angeles. They could do that. Or, yes, mm -hmm. you could do that easily. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's talk about people. Which one? Uh, I know you've been <laughs> traveling a lot otherwise, mm -hmm. and that you've traveled through Europe, and that uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that you went to Afghanistan in 1975. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about that mm -hmm. before, and that was, I know, an experience. It too. really was. But given the fact that we've just got a few minutes left, I'd mm -hmm. like to talk about people. <laughs> okay. Which ones? <laughs> uh, well, you know the ones we've talked about already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
talk about faculty, talk about administrative people, chancellors, deans. You, now, when you first started out, uh, Frank Gorman, Dean Gorman, mm -hmm. was dean of the College of yeah. Education. And he was a delightful he? person. I remember Just it very well. And he's been interviewed in this series good, as well. Good, <laughs> good. Yes, he, he was a very fine dean. He, was, he looked like a dean, and he mm -hmm. acted like a dean. <laughs> and he was really very kind. He was the one that um, I was out there for something, getting something, and he said, Helen, why haven't you started on your master's degree? And I said, well, I've been involved in a lot of groups and things and, and busy. And he said, maybe someday you'll give up your organizations and get an education. <laughs> I signed up the fall, that fall. <laughs> now, who, who replaced him as dean? Was that, I'm trying uh, to remember. So Ed, am I. Ed Donoska, was he? Was yes, that? it was Ed Donoska. And okay. then after Donoska was Kennedy. Yeah. And uh, How, Now, tell us something about them as deans. Uh, I knew Ed very well, uh -huh. but he only stayed a short while. Yes, I, I really didn't know that much about him. He was easy to talk to and, and everything, and it was no problem. But um, I really didn't know he him that well. He moved down to Florida, and then he, oh. he uh, died quite unexpectedly. Oh, really? So he, See, I didn't even know that. Yeah, he had cancer uh -huh. and, uh, mm. and died when he was fairly young. Paul Kennedy was a delight to have. He could always think of funny things. Yeah. But he was also one that expected. Well, P, every, uh, now everybody that I have talked to that, that it's known Paul has a story about him. Do you have any stories? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was just fun. <laughs> he was just fun. He could always come up with something that would be interesting but funny. Yes. And uh, you could be very serious with him, and he was very serious about education and working there, but he also had a sense of humor that was delightful. I've seen him recently at um, a, a restaurant, and uh, he uh, his, he's not as as uh, well. Well, that happens to all of us, yeah. but uh, mm -hmm. he was very helpful to me yes. when uh, we were developing our our school psychology mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. which wasn't even in his college. Yes. And, uh, but he, he, did, he would be. He really was very mm -hmm. helpful. I remember with Dean Gorman one time, the fellows in our department said, uh, came over and said to Dr. Bethel and the rest of us, we want, we're, we want you all, we're all going to go to lunch together. Mm -hmm. And they named the day and we said, okay. And uh, so as we were starting out, we said, where are we going? <laughs> they said, Mickey's a go-go. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> and the dean said as we were going out, they said, he said, where are you going? We said, we're going to lunch. You want to come with us? He said, well, I'd like to, but I've got some meetings. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I really appreciate your coming in and I spending an afternoon with me. This has been fun, Helen, but we, thank you. unfortunately, Time. good things come to an <laughs> end and we're going to have to wrap up here. Well, thank you. Uh, it's been great. And to our audience, uh, thank you for joining us today in a visit with Dr. Helen Howell. Professor Emeritus and longtime faculty member in teacher education. We've been taking a look at some of the history of UN Omaha as seen through the eyes of the history makers. And Dr. Howell was certainly a history maker when, during her time here at UNO. This is Jack Newton inviting you to join us again in the series we call Reflections in Time. Reflections in Time is made possible in part by support from the UNO Alumni Association, fostering a legacy of alumni giving since 1913.